talk about uh, GDPR for researchers, or basically sort of the protect chapter, and then focusing on the GDPR. Um, and yeah, it's about making your data management GDPR proof. Uh, and I am uh, Emily Kaikam. I'm the legal support officer at uh, DANS. And um, in my daily work, I'm very often uh, working with the GDPR uh, and mainly on uh, the basis of, uh, well, implementing it in our organization. So uh, for a large part on the, uh, uh, yeah, part of implementing it in our services, as well. but I'm also involved in, well, in the other side, uh, on how uh, research has been conducted. Yes, so um, first, well, introduction and session outline. Um, at first, at this session, I wanted to set up some learning goals, which are quite clear, I guess, just how to make the research data management and what's, what needs to be covered in your data management plan. So the session outline will be uh, first a little warming up where I use uh, Mentimeter. So I'll uh, ask you to uh, get your uh, phone because uh, you can use that to uh, give some uh, input. So good to have that at hand already. Um, then I'm going to give us some, some uh, yeah, sort of very short GDPR beginner's guide for researchers, which is just a very uh, basic um, um, uh, part that where I explain just the, the, the general uh, aspects of the GDPR. And then follows a, a sort of practical part where we're going to look at research and then the before, during and after uh, phases. And then at the end, I think it's nice to yeah, share experiences or challenges, uh, sort of a beginner's guide for uh, researchers. We're going to look at uh, the GDPR and what it entails. Um, so we're going to be looking at, well, what does the GDPR actually regulate? When do your research data fall under the GDPR? Uh, what do you need to collect? When, what do you need to collect personal data? And how do you, how do you actually process personal data? And uh, what are the rights of data subjects? I'm going to discuss these uh, points now. So what does the GDPR, GDPR regulate? Just very general about the GDPR. Well, of course, protection of personal data, but also the free movement of personal data. So it's not intended to uh, not uh, use personal data uh, in its essence, but to when you do that, to protect it properly, to do that in the right way. So it, uh, it's about, as I mentioned, rights and obligations regarding data subjects. Uh, and controllers and processors. And controllers are the persons, the parties that decide to process personal data. And processors are parties that process data on your behalf. So uh, that you, uh, for instance, in a, where you store your data, that's another party, then that's a processor proceeding that party is processing on your behalf. Um, and of course, this has um, the GDPR's implications for how you can do research. And that's what we are looking at now. Um, so when do your uh, research data fall under the GDPR actually? Well, I think that is quite well known. Uh, it falls under GDPR when you collect personal data. Uh, but what is personal data? Perhaps also really well known, but still it's good to uh, be clear about this. So personal data are any information which are related to an identified or identifiable natural person. So it's important to realize that Personal data is when it's identified. So when you have directly like name and uh, address and other information that directly identifies a person um, or uh, identifiable. So it can be uh, identified through, for instance, a combination of variables um, or in any, any other way. Um, so not directly identified, but identifiable and a natural person, which means a living person. So the GDPR does not apply to deceased uh, persons, uh, which might be uh, uh, not that as well known as the definition of uh, or the general definition of personal data. Um, so also important is um, uh, special categories of personal data, also called sensitive personal data, because when you uh, process those, um, well, stricter rules apply. So it's different from uh, personal data, as, as those can do much more harm to a person when they uh, are, become public or when they're not well protected. So just a, a quick overview of what are special categories of personal data. I'm not going to mention them all, but just uh, to give you uh, the, um, well, the overview of what it entails. So for instance, health data or uh, well, religious data, 
uh, or ethnic uh, data can uh, are all um, uh, special categories of personal data. So if you process those, you have to be extra careful uh, on what you, on how you're doing it, and if you actually need them. Um, so what do you actually need to collect personal data? Well, that's quite a simple answer. You need a, legal, a sort of a so-called legal basis. Uh, in under GDPR, it's called the lawfulness. So you are not allowed just to start out processing, collecting uh, personal data. You actually have to have a, a legal basis uh, that, uh, well, how do you say that? Um, well, that explains and um, uh, yeah, gives you the right uh, if you can properly, uh, um, how do you say that? Um, well, you have to uh, be, be able to um, to to explain uh, how you um, lawfully uh, process that data. And for instance, I think uh, there are six of those. So those are listed here. Um, you can read the uh, well the information that's given here. Um, and, and so this is basically what it is. So uh, if, if you're, if it's about the company doing things or research, it doesn't matter. You have to have one of these legal bases. But in research, uh, you generally come across uh, using consent, and I think in the social sciences that is mostly, if not always, the, uh, the legal basis. So consent, as you can, that we're probably all familiar with, is uh, when people just deliberately uh, uh, agreed to uh, to take part in your research. So that is the legal base. That's what you need before you can start. Your research, and then about the rights of the data subjects. Um, the data subjects on the GDPR have a lot of rights, uh, but I've listed. Uh, I focus now on these uh, rights. Uh, to well, to begin with, it's about transparency. So uh, data subjects always need to be informed about how their personal data are processed. That's a very specific uh, and important uh, aspect of the GDPR. Um, and which also isn't applies if you reuse data. So if you use data from an archive, for instance, and you're doing something new with that data, you again process the personal data. You have to um, be uh, transparent on how you're using that data uh, towards the data subjects. And also important is that data subjects have the right to withhold their consent, which makes sense, they, they can say no when they want to take, when you ask them to take part in your research, but they also can withdraw their consent. And they can do that during and after research. And you have to, uh, in your research, you have to handle such a request. And I'm not going to into all these details about this, but uh, right now, because um, there's not enough time to do that, but I found a very practical overview of the Tilburg University who places uh, the, well, the whole, uh, the, the, this process on its website. I think it's interesting uh, if you want to know more about this to take a look at that, about how that works, much can we to do. So how do you actually process personal data? Well, if we look at and in general, there are several principles that you need to adhere uh, to. And um, some are actually put together, such as lawfulness, fairness, and transparency. Um, so they are, they are listed here, and they are, well, they actually make, make sense, of course. Uh, for instance, the integrity and confidentiality that you have to secure your data properly. And also, I think there are uh, other principles that are obviously always important, but uh, in, the, in the context of research, it's very important to think about. Uh, data minimization as well. The status quo has got to do with how they like to make it your data. That's more computational. And these are the, the basics that are important in the GDPR to the process of data learning. So, I know I will. Um, we go into the world of the book and uh, some of the aspects I just mentioned from America. Um, so you can do that well, as I mentioned before, do I have after the research? Um, well, the first step that you do, um, you know, the next step is to go and ask yourself, do you need 
the discussion by going to the same So for the first time, I'm going to go to the next one. So we can fix our website. And then we go to the same button. Well, there's a here for the problem. The research question of the concept. What are the flaws and the level of the solution? And the first of the three rules. That's what you're going to research. And this is what it's saying. So you can just go like this. Um, um, easier to, uh, to digest as well. Um, and this is what I'm going to do with my country's And, uh, we're going to have a lot of, uh, just to get an idea of what you're, uh, up against. Uh, what you're up against. So the first one is, um, and it's, I think I'm going to say so it's like this. What is your age? How many men do you believe? And what's that? What? This is personal data. I would say now, uh, because the data and the knowledge of the data to identify the person, that might say it's true. You have to be sure that you've got two or three years now. That doesn't say very well. And that's a person. But you can't identify it. And what's the best? So, the next, as you know, the next thing to look at you, and I'm going to be there, 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 and I'm going to then it might be the overwhelming question later. Let's make it up. Let me see you on the third side. Let me tell you something like, what is your political affiliation? What is your address? And of course, we're dealing with personal data. And of course, we're dealing with personal data. And of course, we're dealing with personal data. And also, we just take care of it. And we're going to be dealing with the information. And also, we're going to be special categories. Personal data or sensitive personal data. So, and this is the data. Yes, the data that's in the data. So we can put them in mind. Then we have to say, okay, this is not done. But then you have to decide if uh, you have to be successful and you're going to have to be successful. Okay, what are you going to do? And um, then the first step on the next step is conducting the data protection impact assessment, which is what we sort of do in planning. Um, that uh, you are very good and you are not going to be able to do the situation. But this guy is an instrument that you can have to analyze, identify, and minimize the data protection rules. So you know, you know, some sort of data and screening of the internet. And it also includes how you have a balance with it and it is so And it is very good and so on how we see that. I'm going to say, 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 I'